Yep. Well, I think you guys remember this thing. We're gonna be getting underneath the car tonight and figure out what in the world happened. Looks like before we get that oxygen sensor fixed, we're gonna have to get underneath here and fix this. Sure to set the emergency brake. Brake's already set. Well, I decided that uh, I'm really not going to bother with uh, trying to deal with exhaust leak at the moment. I'm just going to finish up the oxygen sensor like I said I was going to do for you guys. Got the car up on the jack stand. The jack partially supporting the car. I'm going to have to get underneath there and do some yanking so I want to make sure it's secure enough to not go anywhere. Get an oxygen sensor socket. And two one inch wrenches. And the reason for these is so that when I get underneath the car, I've got added leverage. In case you're curious what I'm doing with a hose clamp, is so that when I slide the oxygen sensor socket down on the oxygen sensor, I'll already have the, the hose clamp on there first. I can slide this in, I can tighten it up, I can clamp around the end right here and lock it right on that oxygen sensor, and it will not round out that oxygen sensor. Get underneath there and get this in place. Now, as you've already seen, you get up underneath here, get this little plastic clip out of place. Pull the carpeting down. I'm going to take my two T pins out of the way again. 
there's their plastic clip that holds the plug. There's the plug. Undo the plug. And I don't know if you can see that down there or not. That's where it goes down through the floor. Go ahead and push that down through. Sink your wire all the way down through. Zip tie and the oxygen sensor plug. Get down here and just cut that. You're gonna take your Hose clamp, slide it over your wiring. And take your oxygen sensor socket, slide it up on there like so. Right there, right there's our reason for our oxygen sensor failure. We have green crusties. Well, let's go ahead and put the new one in. Got our brand new Denso oxygen sensor. There's T34-4233. We're going to be putting that in. They come with two different little instruction booklets. One for oxygen sensor removal and installation. And another one for oxygen sensor grommet preparation. Just in case any of you have no idea how to do that stuff. Now, I'm gonna pop this out. I'm gonna make sure that when we take it out, we do not touch this part with our fingers. And of course, you got your little tube of uh, anti seize in there.
to save the little packages because I've got my uh, Permatex and AC's copper lubricant. I'm putting that a little bit of that on the threads and then we're going to put the oxygen sensor in. We put this on, we put just a little bit on the threads themselves. That's all there is to it. Get a little bit on there. Just make sure not to get it on the element. I'll take the oxygen sensor and just screw it in. And work it back and forth a little bit, get the anti seize in the threads. Slide your oxygen sensor socket on. And snug it up pretty much just like you would with a spark plug and take your oxygen sensor wire and poke it up through the floor, grom it and all. And go ahead and plug it in inside the car. Slide your grommet down the wire. And work it down into the hole. Be sure to put your plug back on its little plastic holder. Secure it back in place. Tuck your carpet back in. It's a little plastic plug. I'll get back down underneath the car. It's recommended that you use electrical tape. And tape around this to seal it up. Take your zip tie. Grab a new zip tie. The old one out of there. Make sure you got your grommet tucked all the way down through the floor. Got your zip tie up in place. Wires all down, covering up. Everything's all set down here. Now we go back up top and confirm the fix. Now to confirm the fix, you take our Zurich dongle, plug this in, Zurich Pro, it's up on the steering wheel here, turn it on,
Hi. Sorry about the glare, really not much I can do about this. Alright, so we're gonna go to diagnose. Toyota. The device is properly connected to the car. Turn the key on. There's the communication. 16 pin. System selection, all systems, engine and en engine coolant temperature. Now I haven't started the car yet because I want to get this cold, so we can see it going into closed loop. We're gonna see special functions, read fault codes, data stream. Interested in airflow sensor? No, air fuel ratio sensor. Boy, that's strange. Okay. Bank one sensor one. Uh, let's see. Fuel system, so we're now we're in closed loop. So it says sensor two. All right, so we selected five pids. Select okay. And let's see. Three things we can craft, so we'll just grab those. Come on, you can do it. There we go. Click OK. And we're going to go ahead and start and look for life. And yeah, you can probably hear it's a little loud. The muffler decided to snap off last night, so that's going to be our next video. not showing whether or not we're in open or closed loop but uh, oxygen sensor one it's air fuel ratio sensor is already on the move idles coming down We're already in closed loop. Yeah, we're closed. Three 
waiting for some activity on bank sensor number two which in this case is this green trace down at the bottom starting to get some life. Covering now right about uh, 0.7 volts. Just climbing a little bit again. Now, let's go back and clear the codes. Uh, let's see, clear fault memory. Click OK. Check engine light is now out. And go read fault codes, see if anything comes up. We have no trouble codes. I haven't found an easy way to check all system monitors, but in the 94 PIDs, you can select monitors manually. Scroll through, click anything that says monitor on it, I guess. Complete parts monitor, I don't even know what that is. 
EGR monitor. We don't have one, but I'll select it anyways. EVAP monitor. Uh, heated catalyst. Fuel. Heated catalyst. Aspire monitor. Oxygen sensor. Heater monitor. Monitor. So I'll click OK. And we have not available, complete, not available, available. I don't get that one. Incomplete. Available, not available, complete, available, incomplete. Available, not available. Zurich, you could be a little bit more helpful on the ones that uh, aren't available. And we have one of two, so if we scroll up, we'll get another page. Complete, available, available, incomplete. Oxygen sensor, airflow sensor ratio. Um, I don't know why I have a bad habit of saying air flow, air fuel sensor. And click combine. There's nothing here to combine. But like they say, no one scan tool seems to do it all. So we're going to show you another one that I've got real quick just to make this real easy. And the uh, check engine light is out. We'll uh, do a health check on this. Health report, let it go through everything on its own. And we have no fault codes anywhere. Do not forget to retrieve your VCI. to diagnostics onboard diagnostics we have three incomplete none have failed and of course you have to subscribe to this app to get it to do much of anything diagnostic trouble codes none Here we can see all of our monitors that we've completed. Catalyst is incomplete, EVAP is incomplete, oxygen sensor is incomplete. Uh, sensor heater circuits, not available this drive cycle. Let's see, misfire fuel, comprehensive component. So we need to drive it around a little bit and check back later. Well, I think that pretty much concludes the uh, oxygen sensor replacement our uh, check engine light is no longer on and readiness monitors only one is incomplete 
and that one is the evap everything else is done so that's a fix we'll uh catch you again in the next one i'm probably not going to be doing the exhaust system replacement uh video i'm just going to get this done and get it out of the way but uh have a good one don't forget to uh like and subscribe i really appreciate it have a good night In case you're curious what I'm doing with the hose clamp. And so when I slide the oxygen sensor down on 